So for me, the Moto 360 Sport, even in 2016, is still the perfect smartwatch. I realize it's getting a little long in the tooth now, but for my purposes, it's just the perfect watch. Number one, it's just a nice small watch. It's simple. It's not big and bulky. Um, number two, there's some features that I just can't live without. Um, this watch has wireless charging, which some smartwatches have, but not all. And the big one for me is what Motorola marketed as the AnyLight display. Um, the AnyLight light display is a transflective LCD display. You can see even indoors here, uh, when we have the screen active, it's lit up in color. And when it goes to the always-on display, um, it looks more like a standard uh, LCD watch face. And that's because it kind of is. Um, and so the great thing about this, uh, besides the fact that it doesn't use a lot of power, um, is that outside in direct sunlight, you can read it plain as a day. Um, and that's one feature that was on a handful of watches in 2016 when these came out. But uh, at the time of filming, there is nothing current, uh, nothing newer than 2016 that has this type of display. And I've just gotten way too used to it. So the other great thing about the Moto 360 Sport is the fact that since they've been out for a few years, they're relatively easy to score on eBay for not a lot of money. I've gotten some as cheap as $60. I usually don't pay over $100 for them. Um, so yeah, I picked up one of every color they offered um, because I'm a dork like that. I've also got one in the drawer that I got for a little bit of nothing for parts that I've already um, robbed a screen out of to fix this orange one when the screen went bad. Um, you can check out my video. I've got linked in the top right hand corner for how to tear one down. Um, so yeah, I keep an eye on eBay and sometimes when one shows up for parts, maybe it has a ripped band and it's just a little bit of nothing, I'll go ahead and snag it so that I have parts to keep these going. And so recently I saw one that caught my eye. So I was scrolling through eBay and this one just looked a little off. And at first glance, you might think, oh, maybe it's some sort of cheap Chinese knockoff. But no, this is an actual uh, Moto 360. Um, this is a pre-release Moto 360. And uh, the first giveaway on uh, the pre-release models is down here uh, in, in the area where the ambient light sensor is, or the flat tires, many people call it. Uh, we've got uh, the Motorola logo. Um, we've also got a little QR type bar barcode and some white lines. And um, what, from what I've read, the reason that they put uh, these on the front of the watch face um, is to prevent photo leaks of people who are testing these watches, um, to, to kind of discourage them from taking photos and, and leaking photos uh, to the media before the watch is officially released. Of course, it's not real hard to get around uh, this, as you can see in this uh, leaked photo um, of a uh, regular Moto 360 second gen, um, but it was there nonetheless. Now, I used a, um, uh, a program to decode this little barcode, and all it came up with was uh, this number, um, so that might just be a way for them to track, you know, which which watch went to which person, maybe. I'm not sure, I'm just speculating. So let's go ahead and compare uh, the rest of what is noticeable uh, in the differences between this pre-release model and the final product. I would say the other thing that stands out is um, the bezel uh, being this polished chrome uh, finish. Um, most of the other models have a, a, a gray finish like this. Um, and None of the official, officially released ones had a, had a chrome finish. And actually, these are the same size watch. They're exactly the same. Um, but that chrome finish, for some reason, makes this one look bigger. I also think, personally, it makes it look cheaper. Um, and I'm glad they went with, uh, went with the look that they went with. Um, so the black one had the, uh, had the gray finish. Um, as well as the orange one or the flame color, as they say, had the uh, gray finish as well. Uh, the closest thing uh, that you can find on the final models would be the white one, which has kind of a, a polished uh, a polished stainless steel look. Um, so um, sort of close, but again, I think, in my opinion, it looks way better than uh, what they had on this pre-release model. 
and um, that chrome is also uh, on the back on the side here that polished chrome um, so you know a little bit different than what they put on the final model now interestingly enough the clasp is um, the brushed look um, like they put on the white model uh, now again the the black ones have the black clasp um, and the black sides but it does look very similar to the clasp um, that they put on the white one um, although one big difference is that the white one had, or that the final model had the little Motorola logo engraved in it and this pre-release model does not and you can also see that the this part right here is thicker than the normal one that's because another big change is the band itself and so you can see how the holes are a lot different and you know they did have some problems uh, with the bands on these watches breaking I've never had that problem I've had at least one of these watches that I wear every day since 2016 and so I'm you know I'm not sure if I've just gotten lucky or some people wear them really tight but I've never had a problem with a ripped band but I would imagine this would be a lot more likely to rip um, because you can see there's just not not as much there so that's that's another change um, that they made between the watches so moving along you can see not a lot looks different on the sides here we do have that shiny chrome look around the button um, but other than that, um, I've noticed the plastics look a little bit less fit and finished. Uh, they look a little rough in a few places. I don't know if that's just this model or that I got or if all the pre-production ones were a little more rough like that. Um, on the back, um, you know, they look pretty similar. The uh, pre-release model here has a little white band around the uh, sensor on the back, um, the heart rate sensor. Uh, where the final one did not and the words are a little bit different in the order that they're in and even what they say um, you can also see that this number isn't populated it's just X's so uh, that's interesting too another difference between the uh, pre-release and uh, the final product is they definitely made some improvements on the screen technology it might be kind of hard to tell on camera here but the uh, Moto 360 on the right has a much brighter and more uniform white color and the one on the left is a more yellowish color and um, also isn't very uniform. And speaking of the screen, on this pre-release um, they definitely um, have sturdied up the whole watch as a whole um, because on this one um, if you put any amount of pressure on the back of the watch um, you can see the ripple effect that occurs and I'm barely pushing on it and on the regular Moto 360 Sport um, a light touch does barely anything and you have to really push on it to start seeing anything which is just a huge difference on this one and I can actually feel the back of the watch flexing um, so they they made some improvements there for sure Here's another example of how much more vibrant the final screen is um, on the Moto 360. And one final other difference between the displays is you can see that the pre-release model here has a bevel around the edge of the glass. Uh, kind of like the original Moto 360s uh, had on, on the first generation. And so that kind of gives the edge of the display that that strange little look uh, where it's a little bit distorted uh, like the original generation Moto 360s had. So now that we've talked a lot about the physical differences between this uh, pre-release model and the final product, um, let's talk a little bit about the software. Does this thing work normally? Um, there's very limited information that I could find prior to purchasing this online, but I did see some instances of people talking about um, you know it, that it had pre-release firmware that wouldn't even link to the app at all um, or problems getting notifications or updates or whatever um, this one did have from what I can tell normal uh, firmware on it normal software a very early version of Android Wear um, but it did sync up to the app without a problem um, as far as updating it goes you know I've purchased a bunch of these watches over the years and updating them is always kind of a chore. It, a lot of trial and error, there's a lot of little tricks, and I've tried everything, and this one simply will not update. It 
goes through the download process and gets to 100% and then gives this really nondescript error. And you name it, I've tried it, it just won't update. And I suspect that either the firmware is just a little bit different or maybe they have something where they're blocking uh, these pre-release models via serial number, I don't know. Um, but it won't update. And uh, I kind of had a feeling that that might happen uh, when I bought this. And, you know, the seller on eBay had it listed as 100% functional, you know, guaranteed, blah, blah, blah. And I sent him a message and say, hey, I think this is what you have. I think it's a pre-release. So it's probably not 100% functional. And I'd be interested in buying it for parts at a cheaper price. And they basically weren't interested. I bought it anyway because I was curious. Um, but it, it does not function um, as far as getting all the updates on here. I, I suppose you could use it, but this early version of Android Wear, Wear is really clunky after you've gotten used to the later versions. Um, uh, the other issue, too, is that this has a probably failing battery in it. It gets down to about 20% and just dies without any warning, which is common. And I could put a battery in it, um, but I probably won't waste my time. Alrighty, guys, that about does it for this kind of silly video. I just thought this was highly interesting and figured somebody else might. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you'll consider subscribing. I've got some other uh, videos on the Moto 360 Sport as well as all kinds of other random videos as well.